Alright guys, Casmo here, back with you for another tactics video. This time we're going to talk about security operations. So last time, if you remember, we uh, covered reconnaissance, different types of reconnaissance. And this one, we're going to talk about what I like to call counter-reconnaissance, uh, but also security operations. So, if you remember, our friendly forces were attacking uh, G-Town here. Um, and, and part of the discussion was you know, we're not going to just attack this town without knowing anything. Well, the same is true for a defense. We're not going to defend something and just wait for somebody to show up and not have any warning. All right, so instead we're going to have some sort of early warning. All right, a tripwire, if you will. So that's what we're going to do with our security forces. So if you remember, we did have a couple vehicles out here, and I'm just throwing a couple out. You're really going to have more than this. But the point of this is to give some sort of early warning for these guys here in this town to know that something is coming, right? Because if you picture, you know, this icon really representing a, a larger force, a battalion, company, you know, whatever, those guys aren't just sitting in their tanks and their their BMPs and whatever, just waiting, right? They're not they're not like the AI; they're always awake, always watching. They're going to be sleeping, they're going to be eating, they're going to be playing spades, you know, whatever it is that that soldiers do, they have to kind of be prompted that the attack is about to happen, which, which is why a surprise attack is so devastating, because no one's ready for it, uh, because no one gave them a heads up, and that's really what a security force is trying to do for us uh, in some regards. So, uh, much like reconnaissance, we talked about the different types of reconnaissance, same thing with, uh, with security operations. We've got three types of security that we're going to talk about, so screen, guard, and cover. Now cover, just to kind of knock it out of the out of the way here, um, it's really sort of highbrow core level type operation. So if you if you want to picture that, you know we've got divisions operating, you know in this area, uh, a cover is really going to be something that's performed by uh, what back in the old days was called an, an armored cavalry regiment. Uh, these days, you could say it's a brigade combat team or something, you know, something along those lines of a lot of tanks, a lot of infantry, a lot of artillery, helicopters, jets, really this combined arms force. And what it's trying to do is uh, delay an enemy action or um, conduct some sort of surprise, spoiling attack. You know, we're not going to get too deep into it because it doesn't really uh, mesh with the conversation at hand. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about guard and really a lot about screen. So a screen uh, is really, again, going back to the idea of a tripwire. It's giving you some sort of notification that something is about to happen. So if we look at G-Town here, we're defending G-Town. Um, you know, if you're sitting behind this building and no one's letting you know that something's on the other side of the building, well, then you're just going to be surprised. Well, it's the same kind of concept here. These guys are only as good as uh, their position, their lines of sight, and if they're actually paying attention. Uh, we have to go with the assumption that they want to have at least some early warning that let's say 25% of this force is paying attention, right? I, uh, you know, it kind of depends on, on your security, local security measures, but, you know, only a certain portion of your force is going to be actively looking for enemy attacks and things of that nature. But you want 100%, right? When the, when the enemy's attacking, you want to have everybody, you know, you want to have the cooks out there throwing spoons. Everybody needs to be involved. So... We've got to give some sort of early warning, and that's what our screen does for us. So a screen is going to be um, a smaller element dispersed and establishing a zone in which they give early and accurate warning of an enemy attack. All right, so here, guys, talk about a screen line. Uh, when I was teaching cavalry leaders course, you know, that, that was my put a quarter in the jar. A screen line is not a real thing. A uh, screen line really denotes the front of the screen. A screen needs to have depth. And this is why it was uh, so so death on that idea. Um, I'm going to add a couple more vehicles here just so we can get this idea. All right, so let's take a look at our depth here. All right, so we've got about five miles. Um, you know, that's actually pretty decent. Uh, so as you can see here, you know, ignore the blue here for a second. We've got some depth, right? And why this is important is all of these red icons were screening along a quote-unquote screen line. Okay, well, what happens when the blue guys get past that line? What happens here? All right, now, of course, we've got open terrain. You go, oh, I can see them. Yeah, but if this was all, you know, if this was wooded, if it was urban, you know, if there was the inability for these guys to turn around and look behind them, 
what happens back here. And this is what's important, because if you remember from our last video, we talked about decision points. What are these recon guys trying to do? They're trying to find avenues of approach. They're trying to find options for that ground force commander. The screen has got to maintain eyes on. It's got to be able to harass and interdict and, and try to destroy as much of this reconnaissance as possible. So in order to do that, you've got to have depth. So this guy's got to be able to see stuff as far as he can. So well, let's say he can see out to here. All right, well, he's seeing stuff. All right, and that stuff's continuing to move. At some point, he's going to want to hand that off to, let's say, this guy. Hey, can you see it? Yes, I can. Okay, cool. At this point, this guy may just reposition. Based on whatever's happening to the south, he may want to reposition. All right, and continue creating the depth in that screen. But this is why it is so critical to have overlapping uh, fields of fire, observation, and just overall capability. So what is the screen trying to do other than just spot guys, right? So it, it is helpful to just say, hey, here comes the enemy, but, but can they do anything else for us? Well, look at that range again. What could they be getting from this defending force? Well, artillery. So now I'm not a huge fan of artillery, and I'm even less of a fan of using it against the moving target, but nevertheless, it's something, okay? So uh, it's definitely something that you can leverage, particularly if the terrain is restrictive. Let's say, you know, they, they had to pass through this little narrow... Uh, gap in the trees. You know, you could you could more easily establish an artillery target here, have it lined up and ready to shoot, and just have some sort of trigger. Um, additionally, they could be using aircraft, so jets and helicopters, whatever, uh, could be supporting the screen. So uh, it's important that they're close enough to be able to have that support. It's important enough that they're able to be close enough to talk, um, which kind of leads into how do we get further out, and we'll talk about a guard here in a minute. So ultimately a screen is trying to, again, identify the enemy reconnaissance, and I argue eliminate the enemy's reconnaissance as much as possible, which then goes back to, well, why do the recon guys need to have so much recon? All right, if you remember the beginning of my last video, I talked about, you know, recon is not five or six dudes walking through the woods with face paint on, but it's a large force. Well, the reason it's a large force is because there's another force out there that's trying to defeat them. If five or six guys with face paint on or a couple Humvees are trying to do reconnaissance, they're probably going to get smoked. Um, so it's this sort of arms race, if you will, between the recon and security guys. So in addition to identifying those recon forces and trying to eliminate them, it's also trying to identify that, that enemy main body, right? So if, if these guys, let me find the master, oh, he's one of these other dudes. Anyway, if, you know, this represents the, the larger force, they want to see which way are they committing to? Are they committing to the left? Or are they committing to the right? This is what the screen is trying to tell us. It's trying to harass them with, again, our indirect fires and our aviation. Um, it's trying to do as much damage, both with information and with firepower as possible, prior to that enemy main body making contact with your friendly main body back here. And of course, the trickier part, and uh, not something we really need to mess too much with in DCS, is at what point do these guys go this way you know when do they conduct a passage of lines and get behind the friendly force and and that's always uh, a difficult thing to talk about and again not really the point of the video but there is a point where these guys kind of kind of get out of town all right so that's our screen where can we screen at well really anywhere if this is a stationary force we can be screening anywhere of course it should be focused on where we expect enemy contact but you know if there's other possibilities well then it's probably a good idea to have a screening force out here as well we can screen while moving. So let's say this force is moving, you know, from west to east. We can have this screening element. So let's say that this guy right here at the top is a, you know, a battalion or something. These guys could be platoons out here screening to the south, right? So they're moving along with them and they're trying to identify enemy forces that may be coming in from the south. They could be positioned here in the rear. They could be screening to make sure these guys aren't being pursued. So there's different types of, uh, of screens you could do. Can you screen in front? No. <laughs> so this is where screen or, uh, security and reconnaissance kind of blend together. We don't screen to the front. We conduct a zone reconnaissance. So if you remember from our last video, a zone reconnaissance is a detailed reconnaissance of a defined area. Well, that's basically what we're doing here. So a screen in front of a moving force is really a zone reconnaissance, as you can kind of see here. All right, so what's a guard? Um, that is essentially a defense light, is what I always like to call it. 
um, you're trying to do a lot more damage than a screen is. If, you know, security is always looking for enemy reconnaissance. It's always trying to take out the other guy's eyes. It's always conducting uh, that early and accurate warning reporting. But a guard is going to be a little bit more robust. It's going to have a lot more capability, and it's trying to accomplish more with what it has. So typically a screen is going to be conducted by uh, roughly a troop or company size element. A guard is going to be conducted by a squadron or battalion size element with augmentation. Now, I would argue that that is a very simplistic book answer. It kind of depends on what the enemy is. All right, so if I've got a bunch of tanks and Bradleys, and the enemy's a bunch of dudes with pickup trucks and machine guns, I would argue I probably don't need all that extra augmentation to, to handle that problem. But uh, but in theory, it is a squadron size element. We've got our friendly, I'm kind of changing angles here, so stay with me. So let's say this is our main body, and this is our screen. Let me kind of move them out here. All right, so three, that's that's decent. All right, so we're screening here. All right, a guard is probably going to be operating out here, all right, um, even further. It just kind of depends on the terrain. You know, I think with wooded terrain, kind of restricted movement, this is probably a good distance right about here. We'll put this guy out here just for a marker. All right, so that's probably a good distance. If this was all desert, if we were on the Persian Gulf map, then, then it's probably something a little bit more like that or even like that. It just kind of depends. Um, but what are they trying to do? Well, early, early accurate warning, as we talked about, um, trying to eliminate the enemy's reconnaissance, but the doctrine tells us that they're actually trying to also, if possible, defeat the main body. So don't get hung up on the word defeat, right? So there's different things, you know, destroy, there's defeat, there's block and, and turn and all, all these good words. Essentially, what they're trying to say is that this force, they want it to be robust enough that when the enemy attacks, that they they don't get to continue attacking, that they reach a point where they culminate a little early. Okay, and so defeating them isn't necessarily killing all the the bad guys, but it could be, let's say, the enemy force needs to penetrate this defense. Well, this defense includes minefields and other obstacles. Well, what does this attacking force need then? Let me put some blue guys over here so we don't get too confused. What do these blue guys need in order to uh, counter all those obstacles? Well, they need engineer support. So they can have a whole bunch of tanks and BMPs, but if they only have a couple engineer vehicles, and these guys manage to kill all those engineer vehicles plus a few tanks and BMPs, well, I would argue that this guy's defeated, at least for the short term. Right? He's going to have to get reinforcements, or he's going to have to kind of change his plans. All right, so that's what we're talking about when we when we say the guard is should be able to, uh, within limits, defeat the the enemy force. So what does that guard force composition look like? So like I said, it's it's kind of a, a defense light is how I always described it. And what I would always tell people is let's take this basic building block of a squadron or a battalion, which means we're probably going to have three maneuver companies. So right now these guys are companies. All right, well, this guy's probably out forward, and we could further break this down into platoons and sections, but he's screening for these guys who are defending, and this whole organization is conducting a guard. Does that make sense? They're going to have a little bit of artillery support. They're going to have some aviation support, some jets. But this guy is conducting security operations for this guy, or these guys who are also conducting security operations in the form of conducting defense operations. All right, so where can we guard? Um, anywhere, right? So we can guard on any side of a stationary force and any side of a moving force, even in the front. So... Um, Again, a guard is is almost like an attack or a defense. Just kind of depends on the scenario and, and depends on what you're fighting. So as always, the point of these videos is not just to uh, throw a bunch of doctrine at people and say, look how smart I am, but, but rather to try to integrate it within our mission planning and some scenarios. So we go back to conducting reconnaissance operations. Well, now we kind of know what the opposing force is going to look like. We can get some ideas. Um, I'm a huge fan, again, of just looking at the terrain and figuring out where does it make sense. It makes no sense to be sitting right here in the middle of this field, even though I see that all the time <laughs> in scenarios that I play. Um, it makes more sense for me to be in the trees. 
Uh, it makes even more sense for me to be in an urban area if I can be. Uh, it makes sense for me to be near the high ground. What you don't want to do is be right on top of the high ground because everyone can see you, but you know, maybe I'm in the near the high ground in these trees. So these are things that you want to integrate into your scenarios if you're trying to make it challenging, if you're trying to make it more, you know, quote unquote realistic. So hopefully with the last couple of videos we're starting to tie it all together and you get some ideas of, of how to, to make some scenarios that that have some purpose built into them. Um, again, I'm I'm just a huge uh, proponent of having a purpose behind the missions that I fly and the scenarios that I that I do with with my friends or on the Discord server. We don't just want to plink tanks out in the middle of the fields. We want to have them doing something. If you want to have ground forces doing something in concert with your operations, well, they could be screening, they could be guarding, they could be conducting reconnaissance. So these are just things to think about. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully these are helpful. Uh, I've got a couple of ideas. Sorry for the delay. I've been moving and getting my house set up and all this other good stuff. So apologies. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, any things you'd like to see or know more about, put them in the comments below. Uh, click like and subscribe while you're at it. And if you haven't already, join the Discord Low Level Hell. I'll put the link in the description below. I appreciate you guys watching and we'll talk to you later. Take care.